that crane flies are very common insects. They could be very abundant. There are lots of species of them. And you can find them in very different habitats. But they are not mosquitoes. They do not suck blood. They do not spread the diseases. So. Uh, we started and it was really not associated with crane flies, not with insects. And it, for the first time I came in Korea, that was World Expo in Yosu. And I was invited by the Lithuanian government to prepare like Lithuanian pavilion for this World Expo. And that's how I met uh, researchers from NIBR and other entomologists. And that's how we started. Uh, something very special, because uh, here we are working not only on crane flies. I remember that was in 2012, we were in, collecting in Odessa National Park. And there was crane fly, which was collected more than 80 years. And it was known only from North Korea. And during these 80 years, nobody saw that species. I noted this, and it was the first record. And the only specimen that I have, it was in 2012. It's beautiful species with spotted wings. It's called, well, Latin name. It's well, there are no special methods to collect crane flies. We are using the same methods that we are using for some other insects. And we can, we can collect with entomological nets. We can collect with some special traps like malice traps. We can collect them at light. There are some wingless species, as I told you. They could be collected so-called pitfall traps. Well, adventures. Well, like uh, we collected in Jeju Island uh, this summer and we were just in waterfall and we were totally wet. <laughs> the weather was warm, but we were so excited about these crane flies because we, we had lots of specimens developing there. Sometimes we are looking for the specimens and, and it's difficult to find them, but then we get lots and lots of them. Yeah, so we preserve some specimens dry, but some specimens could be preserved like this, in vials with alcohol. Uh, usually we use 95 or 100% alcohol, sometimes we can use 70% alcohol, uh, and we use these specimens for DNA research. And always you see the small papers inside. So these small papers, they are labels, and every specimen needs to have locality label. That's very important. If we'll miss that information, we'll, we'll not be able to say anything about the specimen. And when we preserve these specimens for a long time, so after a long time, tens of years from now, we can talk maybe about distribution patterns, we can talk about if the species is spreading its distribution or it's disappearing. Sometimes from this museum specimens we can talk about its distribution patterns and we can talk about conditions which, which affect uh, this distribution patterns. Why are they acting like this? Why we have them or why are they we miss them? So it's and maybe we'll start doing works together because when we are talking about such big issues like climate change or reduction of habitats and some other things first of all we need to know species and we can compare these and the lists and then we'll see which species were affected what i am doing and what we are doing here together it's just the first step we need the korean researchers so i'm talking for young korean researchers and probably sooner or later we'll start doing works together at the time and that would be great yeah so.